Well, good morning. Uh, again, we are at uh, the time in the budget negotiations where things really need to move forward, and sometimes they do not. Uh, as you all know, uh, for the last number of months, the, the Senate Republicans and House Republicans have put forward bills uh, in a transparent manner. We've done things early. We've reached out to the governor. We've communicated at every step of the way to create a process that can help us get done on time, where we get good bills uh, that both sides uh, can accept and will help and prosper Minnesota. That has always been our case, and I, I think I can say that I've worked as hard as I possibly can to make that a reality. Uh, and, and I will tell you, as of last, late last week, it felt like that, that was still happening. Uh, but as we, the governor said, I think we do need three-way targets, and that's something that he originally said we needed to do, and we needed to have it done by April 28th. And the House and Senate Republicans said agreed and said that that was a good idea. And as we got close to that, he asked us to then have targets between the House and the Senate only. And we adopted that and did that as well. And so we continued to adapt and step and move to work with the governor. And then last Friday, I believe it was Thursday or Friday, he said we wanted three-way targets. And so we actually were hopeful that we could do this differently and in a way that was open and transparent and could get things done. What then happened over the weekend is that we suddenly uh, started to slow down in a way that we were surprised about. We weren't going to meet Sunday, and even that was okay, but then when we weren't going to have another meeting until Monday afternoon, we were concerned. When we met Monday afternoon, what happened is we got four offers on four bills, but the steps were so small on the smallest bills that we didn't know how we possibly could get there. And I want to say that those offers were unacceptable. They were not I think they were sincere first offers, but they were unacceptable and would not lead to getting done on time. And so we have said that we want to be available uh, at that meeting uh, yesterday, the next, we wanted to get together that evening or this morning, and neither one of those were an option. Uh, instead, the next meeting was going to be today at 1.15, and we still want to do that meeting. We still want to be available, but that concerns us. And then when we found out that uh, the governor would not be available for any of the evenings this week. That concerned us. Th this is serious. And I will tell you that the House and Senate are saying, we are here, we are available, we'll meet anytime and anywhere, but we have to meet and we have to get serious. And so we want this thing to get moving. Uh, we are, are at a place where we have to get moving. We can't continue to do little steps and think that we're going to get done. And with, with that, I want to turn it over to, to the speaker for his comments. But I'm very disappointed. I'm very frustrated because we can do this better, and Minnesota benefits when we do it better. Yeah, I, I agree with the, what the leader said. I think uh, you know we have frustration at the at the slow pace uh, that the governor is proceeding with. Uh, we certainly understand uh, where his priorities are, uh, but. We also know that the governor gains leverage if he pushes us to the end. Uh, what we heard very clearly over the last couple of years is that Minnesotans don't like closed door negotiations and things happening in the last uh, 24 hours of session. Uh, so we left five weeks after our break to come together in an in a open and public way uh, to negotiate these differences and, and frankly uh, we're frustrated that, that we haven't been able to do that fully. And, and we want to encourage the governor to do that. We are, as, as the leader said, we're willing to meet with the governor wherever, whenever, uh, to get this done. We feel like the work that we need to do together is important. We know that compromise is necessary, uh, but we are uh, also, uh, you know, we have uh, prepared, obviously, I think everybody knows that we have bills that are ready to go to the House floor uh, if we don't make real progress very soon. Um, and we are ready to proceed with that, that backup plan uh, frankly, at any time, if, if real progress isn't made basically immediately. So, um, you know, we really want to respect uh, the public. We want to respect this process. We also want to respect the governor. Um, and we know that he plays a, a very big and vital role in this process. Um, so uh, we're going to meet with him today at 115, or at least we hope we are. Um, and we want those negotiations to continue. But we also are ready to proceed um, if the negotiations uh, don't go well and quickly. So with that, I think we'll take some questions. What needs to go well today to prevent you from moving on the bills? Well, I think uh, Senator Gazelka said it uh, pretty
pretty well. We received four offers. Um, if, if you piece those four offers into the bigger puzzle of what all of the bills look like as, as joint targets, um, those, there's, there's no way to consider those as serious offers. I think the ag offer that we received uh, was close to being serious. Um, the others were, were just micro steps and, and frankly, um, moving at that pace will not get our work done here on time. So um, we want to move quicker, we need to move quicker, and, and we need to have an honest and, and earnest conversation at the 115 meeting about how serious are we about getting to, to, to resolution and, and how quickly can that happen. Mr. Speaker, you've done this before. Is this the typical blow up before the breakthrough? <laughs> You're right, I've done this before and, and I've been involved with a few of the blow ups before the, uh, before the breakthrough and, and that does happen. I, I don't think this is. Um, I think this is us just preparing a, a, a backup plan. We, we want to work with the governor, we want to get things solved. Um, the conversations with the governor have been good, uh, but we also don't feel like the governor's been working at a pace that's quick enough to get the work done on time. And that has also been our criticism in past years. Um, and I understand the governor's passionate about these issues. He feels very strongly about uh, you know, his, his state departments, but um, ultimately uh, the legislature needs to appropriate the money, so we have to work together, and that's what we want to do. Um, but it needs to happen quicker if we're going to get done on time. So you're not saying these bills will necessarily come up today? That it's, you're not saying these bills will come up today? It's just you're, you're staging them for? At this point, all options are on the table. Uh, we want to be flexible. We, we, uh, our goal is, in the end, to pass a good transportation bill that covers roads and bridges. We know that we uh, want to pass tax relief for all Minnesotans. Uh, we're not going to move off of those issues, but uh, every option is on the table to get us to the place where we need to get with the governor uh, to make those things happen. And, and we recognize that the governor has his high priorities, and we're open to that. We want to work with him, but uh, every option is on the table. You know, we have not uh, offered that yet. That is scheduled and slated for today. Um, we, we, we made a, a, you know, over the weekend, was he maybe even on Friday, um, we, we talked with the governor about doing this a little differently because in, in the first meetings that we had with the governor, you know, he was very critical of our extremities and we were very critical of his and, and very often those things are taken very personally. So to, to bring the negotiations into a, a, a a, a format that we thought would be more productive. Um, I actually pitched, why don't we just together agree on what the middle points are between us and let's negotiate from the middle out. If, if you believe the spending needs to be higher in an area from the middle, make the case for that. And that was that's less personal. Um, and, and frankly, we think more productive. Um, that didn't really happen yesterday. So, it w you know, yesterday's numbers were a bit of a departure. Um, I, I think today, more than anything, we just need to have an honest conversation about is everybody really serious about getting this done on time? Because we, we don't feel like the governor is, is showing the kind of progress that we would like to see to get it done on time. We've been very clear about wanting to set joint targets between the House, Senate, and the governor, and then letting this happen in a very open, public, transparent way, letting the conference committees and the commissioners work out the differences in the bills. We don't want to sit in a, in a room behind closed doors where the public's not involved and go through budgets line by line. We don't think that's productive. We want, we want people to do it in conference committee. That's what we've said from the very beginning. All of the bills that were uh, sealed up last night have been posted for, I think, a week now. Um, they were all adopted, that language was all adopted in, in open uh, conference committees. Uh, you can't, you know, I understand that the governor might be frustrated that we want, you know, we might not want to negotiate in a closed, non-transparent way behind closed doors and that we want it to happen in a transparent way. I think that's what Minnesotans need to demand right now. Um, th this needs to happen in conference committee. Um, not behind closed doors. And, and in order for us to set the parameters for the conference committee, we need to come up with joint targets between the House, Senate, and the governor. Um, and that's what we want to do. That needs to be the goal. And, and if you notice the, the offers that we received yesterday, you, you can't put together joint targets with those kind of offers. They just, they don't work. And, and 
you know, the, the, the tough part is even finding the middle between our numbers doesn't work because the governor is spending money that doesn't exist in, in his budget. Um, he's, he's transferring $700 million of health care access fund money uh, to make his budget balance. There isn't $700 million of money in the health care access fund to transfer. So it becomes very difficult. And I'm not saying that to be critical. The governor knows that because we passed the reinsurance bill after his budget was out. Uh, but together, we need to work through that, uh, that problem and, and find a balanced, uh, a balanced budget. It's, it's not easy, uh, but we have to do it together. The headline in the paper this morning is, in the dark of night, lawmakers agreed. Is that open and transparent? So uh, the headlines uh, you stated were in the dark of the night. In the end, uh, when you're going to move forward, you have to meet as a, a caucus. The Republican senators met together last night to see which direction we wanted to go. The House had to do the same thing. And so we're, as we're trying to move, there are parts that we have to, to move forward with. And then there's other parts that, uh, we, we, that are open to the public. But we're not going to invite you into a caucus meeting and say, what do you think? We, we have to figure out how we're going to come to agreement with what we want to do first. And so there are some things that we have behind closed doors, but as much as possible, we want it open. That's why we did it early. That's why we, we invited the governor in early, because we want this to work. I, I'll also say that you know, that headline is a misrepresentation. These conference committees, all of that language was adopted a week, I don't even know the timeline, a week ago, I think, um, in, a, in a public, open, transparent process. We've had hours and hours and hours of public hearings in those conference committees trying to work out the differences. Um, you can't, that is an open, transparent process. Going behind a closed door in the governor's office is not open and transparent. And, and we know that's how this works and that we should be in there and we have to set the parameters for, for what the legislators and the, and the commissioners agree to in conference committee. Um, but saying that what happened last night wasn't open and transparent is a, simply a misrepresentation. Um, though that language was adopted in conference committee in open, transparent hearings a week ago. Doors again today. I mean, is this? Are you going to actually debate on these bills? I or? wish. I wish we were headed to conference committee to, to have an open, transparent conversation. But the governor. Remember, we invited the governor to participate in that now three weeks ago, and the governor said no. Right? The governor wanted to come up with with joint targets by the 28th of, of April. You know, he then then he changed his mind and said no. You come up with your legislative position. Well, we did that, and we did it by the 28th of April to honor what the governor had requested. We're doing our end. We're waiting for the governor now to reciprocate. And let me, one more comment on that, uh, because what we, we really want is, is uh, the targets, that we actually have the numbers that we have to work with. Once we have that, it's, uh, uh, what I think that we ought to be doing is that we allow the chairs and the commissioners to work through about 85% of the bill, maybe 90%. That all is open. Uh, there's going to be some things that are very uh, important to the governor, very important to the speaker, and, and very important to myself. Those we can talk about between the, the House, the, the speaker, the governor, and myself. But 85, 90 percent of it, we want it to be worked out and done in that committee process. And I think if we do it that way, we're actually going to get bills that uh, work together better for everyone. And so that's, that's what we're hoping the governor will agree to as we're moving forward. We're not giving up. We're just saying we've got to get moving, and this is one step that we need to take. Bills that are being closed up last night and today. Do you expect he would sign? It would sign them, and if not, then what? Well, I don't know. We're going to make the case for it all the way through. What, what the governor decides to do is, is up to him. Uh, the transportation bill, in particular, is very close. Ag is very close. Legacy is very close. A number of them are farther apart. And we want to work with the governor, uh, but if he doesn't come to the table in a serious way, then then we'll have to make other steps. I think, you know, these budget bills that we put together are great bills. We've got really needed tax relief from Minnesotans. We've got big increases in, in K-12 uh, funding. We've got higher ed funding. I mean, there's just a lot of really good things in these bills. Huge increase in transportation, road and bridge funding. Um, so, you know, our, our hope is uh, that this is something the governor can, can adopt because we know Minnesotans would be behind it. Um, but if not... Uh, you know, we want to continue talking to the governor as well, and we hope that we can make progress, that we don't have to send these bills to the governor. But, um, you know, we hoped that we'd be a lot further along by this point uh, after our break, and unfortunately, here we are. So, you just, are you passing these bills today, tomorrow, or not? We may and be. They're ready so to go. So when will you tell the public whether you're passing these major omnibus bills? 
just before you go to the floor? Well, the, 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 bills, uh, the bills are ready to be passed. I mean, we adopted the language a week ago. You know, they, they, they absolutely could come up on the floor today, tomorrow, um, very likely this week. Um, you know, we're willing to adjust that if we make some real progress with the governor and have a, have a really good, honest conversation, and we feel like that's being reciprocated. Um, but if there's not progress made, um, you know, I think, frankly, we're not going to be accused of not getting our job, on, our job done on time at the end of session. Um, we're committed to getting our job done. We've done everything possible uh, to make that happen, and, and we've, we just, frankly, don't feel like that's been reciprocated from the governor. But we hope that will change um, in time, that, that we don't need to proceed with passing these bills. Very good. Thank you.